Christmas time is almost here. What's up, everybody? We're here. We're doing it again. It's Filmstruck Film Club. We, we, there's so much Christmas happening. It's not quite Christmas yet, but little Christmas Groot is here, and that's exciting. And Groot's here, as always, but what's up, everybody? I'm Carson. You're here. We're doing it again. We're doing another Filmstruck Film Club. We watch a movie every week. We might short or uh, elongate that. I, I'm thinking maybe in the new year we're going to do one every two weeks. Just to give everybody a chance to, you know, watch the movies. Uh, but we watched a killer movie this week. Uh, it's it's one that I had not really heard of, to be honest. Uh, but it is by a director who we have heard of because we've watched three of his films in this, in this year club. Uh, we watched a Jean-Luc Godard film. Uh, a, you know, French New Wave, Mount Rushmore kind of person here, Godard. Uh, we, we have watched films of his in this club. We watched Breathless, Once Upon a Time. We watched uh, Piero Le Fou, and we watched Viva Seville. And this week we watched uh, his second film, which is not entirely true. It was his second released film. His second film that he made, I guess, was like blocked up by the censors. So it didn't, it didn't come out until I think his third release. But... It doesn't matter because we watched his 1961 film, A Woman is a Woman. Or if I was French, I'd probably be able to say, Une femme est une femme. And maybe that's how you say that. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it is a musical, which kind of caught my eye because uh, we've watched a couple musicals in this here club. And a couple of them were by Jacques Demy, and the music was by Michelle Legrand, and that's exciting because Michelle Legrand did the music for this. So that's what's up. That's what we're doing. Uh, it is like a star-studded cast of French actors: Jean-Paul Belmundo, Anna Karina, uh, Jean P uh, Briali. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Whoops! Uh, but the, the, if you look at these people's uh, IMDb or whatever, I mean, they've just worked with all the best directors, and Anna Karina and Belmundo uh, have done a couple films with Godard, Breathless, Pierre Le Fou, Viva C.V., the ones I mentioned already. Um, but yeah, I, we were excited to check this one out. We wanted to see what a Godard musical would look and feel like, and I gotta say, uh, in the most Godard way possible, it's not a fucking musical. <laughs> it's like... It's the idea of a musical, as he is quoted to have said. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Jean-Luc Godard, the guy is like punk rock cinema. And I say that in the sense like, people have said many times that he has like changed the grammar of film and changed the vocabulary of cinema and stuffy, fun things like that. Uh, because basically he just broke all the rules. I mean, if you watch Breathless, that's like the, the kind of shot out the canon here you go, version. Oh, we also watched another film of his, Weekend. That was a fun one. Um, but yeah, this uh, this idea of it being a musical is funny because uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first like song in this movie, uh, the music keeps cutting out, which I thought was amazing. Uh, we do, f just real quick, right? Little like, just a little housekeeping about the plot. Uh, so my girl, Anna Karina, who's a powerhouse beauty and she's just so, sly and charming and fun. Uh, she plays Angela. She's a exotic dancer of sorts, a stripper. And uh, she has his boyfriend and she is like, I want to have a baby. And he's like, nah, I don't really want to do that. And so that's that's kind of a fun bit of, of conflict there because then she threatens like, all right, I'm just going to bang your friend Alfred, Jean-Paul Belmundo. And he's like, yeah, all right, go ahead. Uh, and so then we kind of have this little like trio of, of, of people running around. There's a great scene where Belmundo's like, how can I prove to you that I love you? Uh, and it's, and they kind of go back and forth and there's, there's just all kinds of fun stuff. We're going to get into it, but long story short, the film winds up being about how she's like, fine, I'm going to bang your friend <laughs> and he's going to be my, my baby daddy. Uh, and so then that, that winds up being a thing that, that comes into play at the end. And I don't really want to spoil it right this second. Um, but yeah, it's like this first song that happens, we're at her, like, the club that she sings at and strips at. And uh, there's already in there, like, just some really fun, weird film things that, you know, Godard's always down for a little magic trick. So 
there's like this little doorway that has a red curtain and as people walk through it like oh i'm fully changed <laughs> uh and it's kind of cool but yeah this first song totally caught me off guard because like she she sets the little tape up and she's got her costume on and she goes out on stage and then like right when her verse starts it happens a cappella, and then like when her verses end the music comes back in and then every time she sings the music drops out and so i was kind of like what kind of musical are we in here for and then uh spoiler alert it, it just you know we don't really it's not really a musical in the sense that you may think uh there's a great little scene where she says like i wish i was in a musical like with Gene Kelly and stuff, and and she like does a little dance, and she's outside with Belmundo, and there's I I loved the scene where she just says I bet you can't do what I could do, and then it's just like random cuts of them like in funny almost like mock balletic stances, and they're you know mirroring each other, and it's and it's just this brief little moment that happens, and once it's over, we never revisit it, and uh, that's Godard, man. He's just like this was what I was in the mood to shoot. So I shot it, and I was like, you guys do this. Um, there, I, I watched this pretty cool interview with him and Dick Cavett on YouTube. It's like, you know, almost an hour long, I think. Uh, but who knew Godard spoke such great English? Anyway, uh, it was a really cool interview. It's from 1980, so like, it, it doesn't spend a whole lot of time talking about this. But I just felt like I got a much better sense of like the filmmaker and the kind of the mind behind the the crazy choices that he makes in, in all these movies. Um, let's see here. It's his first film in color, which is not that crazy when you think that he'd only made two features before that. Uh, but he, you know, wound up working almost exclusively in color after that, which is not true. Jeez. Well, I'm, I'm not like a Godard scholar. I never read his biography or nothing. I'm just a fan. Uh, I guess he's like, you know, he's still alive. He's still making movies. He, he had a movie come out like a year or two ago. Um, but I guess he's like a bit of a curmudgeon old guy. He's kind of a dick. But you know what? Whatever. He doesn't suffer any fools, man. That's just not what he's about. Um, he's just like... I said it earlier, but the guy's just punk, man. He's got a punk rock sensibility. Um, yeah, the, there's, there's really not a whole lot I have to say other than like I, I really enjoyed it. Anytime I watch a Godard film, I, I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. And... Actively while I'm watching it. I have moments and maybe you do too where it's just kind of like what the fuck am I looking at? But I like it. I like what I'm looking at. It just doesn't always make sense to me I love how he's really great about like throwing words up on the screen and just like dominating the image with with words and He'll do fun things where like he'll what does she say? Um, there's a part where the two guys are in the apartment with her and she says like, you know, do, do something weird to, to Prove to me that you love me or whatever. And, like, they both just start doing the weirdest shit. Like, there's, like, a chicken moment. There's a great bit where, like, they refuse to talk to each other. And so then they're just, like, grabbing books off the shelf and, like, pointing at words. It's like, this is, this is you. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm kind of all over the place. The movie's kind of all over the place. Godard's all over the place. But if, if you've ever seen a film of his and you haven't seen this one, I really suggest you check it out. Um... If you, uh, you know, if you're, if you're totally like, I, I, I don't even know who you're talking about. Well, then you got a lot of catching up to do. But start with Breathless. That's probably the best place to start. Um, but yeah, take a take a look through the uh, the the list of movies we've watched on Letterboxd. There's a uh, Filmstruck Film Club things we've watched so far, and on there there's all all the movies that we've ever watched, and you can you can kind of catch up as it were, and and let me know what you think. And you know, if there's a Godard film, like we haven't watched Contempt, I would like to watch that. The guy's made a ton of movies. Um, there's th one last thing. Fun, fun references to other, like, homies of his in this movie. Uh, and even self-referential things. There's a part where Belmundo comes into their apartment and he's like, like, can we hurry this up? I want to get home. Breathless is on TV. <laughs> and it's like, bro, you're in that movie. Uh, so that was just kind of funny. And then there's a part where he, he runs into uh, the chick from Jules and Jim and he asks her how that's going. Because that movie is going to come out next year. And he's like, oh, hey, how's Jules and Jim going? Oh, that's cool. And then there's a cute little part where there's like a little piano playing and shooting. And Anna Karina's like, oh, shoot the piano player. So there's all these like little references to the to the homies. You know, Truffaut gets a shout out. Godard's like, I'm going to shout myself out. Uh, but yeah, man, it's just like, 
it, it's kind of just you got to throw it on and, and check it out. Uh, I, I'm going to get going. I'll, I'll leave you alone. I, I didn't really even say anything in this video. Uh, but, you know, it's almost Christmas. We're going to watch a Christmas-themed movie this next week. Uh, so maybe take a guess. What do you think it is? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, follow us at Filmstruck Film Club so you can keep track of all these picks. And like I said, we're probably we're probably going to end the new year. We might restructure this club a little bit, we'll, but I'll keep you posted. In the meantime, say goodbye, Groots. Yep. All right. We'll, we'll see you soon. Much love.